today's topic is about the experiential learning through art integration projects and portfolios art integration project and portfolio these two are the important two components in the internal assessments right for the past two years we have been doing this art integration projects and the portfolio cbsc has changed the scenario from the uh, general projects and lab activities so from that we have just shifted to the art integration projects and portfolios that to be done in the internal assessment along with the regular record, record work lab activities multiple assessments with that we have to do this two important components so how are we going to do it so how we have to give ideas to the students to proceed this art integration projects and portfolios and what is the experiential learning through the art integration and the portfolios learning what is called learning learning is not just getting the marks okay something uh, memorized and recall and writing in the examination getting the marks that is not equivalent to learning please tell to the students education is not just to get the marks it is something more it is to gain the knowledge so gaining the knowledge is called the learning so learning is a process where the students get the knowledge okay so knowledge is obtained how through the experience so if there is a proper experience that is transformed to the knowledge and that is called as the process is called as the learning so how are we going to evaluate the learning how do we know that students got this particular learning when they apply those concepts whatever they have learned if they are able to apply those concepts in the abstract thing or in the real life scenario then they can say learning is obtained by the student that is called learning so time and again till don't just prepare or get the things only to get the marks no education is not that education is something more we have to get the knowledge in the particular grade the concepts to be understood through the experience so there's no experience no proper learning will be there so the complete scenario has changed now earlier it was the teacher centric now the student centric now it has become the conceptual learning right competency based education so nep has come so next year onwards we are going to start nep in full fledged so there we have to concentrate in the conceptual it is a competency based education it is not the solving the problems completing the exercise and giving the test it is not the scenario teachers so it is going to be something more something more in the sense it is not the out of the box and all so what we are experiencing okay we have to show that experience to these students they have to get it so that knowledge will be created that knowledge should be applied in the real life concept that is called as experiential learning so in mathematics if you see children can learn in all the ways so nature tells the n number of things right nature tells what is the mathematics if they see the leaf they can talk about the symmetry if they see the monument they can talk about surface area and volume of the monument right like that only we are creating the questions in the case based questions and all isn't it teachers so whatever they are seeing through that they have to get the experience and they have to involve in that so it becomes the learning so how a teacher should help in this part so we are the facilitators so we have to help our students to get those points in that perspective i am going to deal this section okay so if you see here we have the cone of learning i see and i forget just i see the i see what are the teachers doing then i forget sure i hear yes if i hear what are empty my teacher is telling then i remember something but when i do only i can understand and i can apply those things in my real life concept not only really real life if i want to do something in the abstract way if i want to apply the theorem if i want to do the theorem logically i have to do something i have to experience it then only i can do it it was given by the famous philosopher chinese philosopher confucius 
So if you see in that uh, triangle, right, the cone, the cone of learning they are telling here. So it is not like the Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy says where we have the top part, that is the creating something. But here the area tells it. So reading comes in the very, very less area. It occupies the less area. Just by reading, children, they are able to understand only 10% of what they read. If you ask after two weeks, they can remember only 10% whatever they have read. But if by hearing the words we are teaching, children just hearing and listening. By that, they are able to understand only 20% of what they are hearing. And if they see, so we are just drawing the figure. Suppose if you are teaching the tangents, and if you draw the figure and teach the tangents, they are seeing it, they are listening something, and in that, they can understand only 30% of what they see. Suppose if the same thing, watching a movie, right? If you show some movie, they never ever forget it. Is it so? Right? So whatever the questions from the movie, they are able to give the answers before you ask the question itself. Then looking at an exhibit, if you show some model or some teaching aid, some chart like that, from that, surely they are able to retain 50% of it. If you show some demonstration, so demonstration means here, I'm taking the clinometer, using the clinometer, I'm seeing, see children, this is the way I have to see the point. This is the way I have to see the top of the tree. So the angle for formed here. If I show like that, by seeing the demonstration, they may learn, okay? Or seeing it done on location. We are taking to some location and we are doing some experiment. From that also children, they are able to understand it. So if they do like that, 50% of what they see and hear, they are able to remember it and they can retain it. And all these top four, reading, hearing words, seeing and watching the demonstration in that, these are all the passive learning. Only 50% only they are able to remember after some time. But if they participate in a discussion, giving a talk, then 70% of what we say, they are able to recall after some time, after some weeks, months, or after some years also. Okay, so the participation is very, very important. So if we do some experience thing, that is, suppose we are showing the uh, surface area and volume we are taking. If we show the solid, so I have the cube, on the cube, I place the hemisphere. I mounted the hemisphere on the cube. Now you tell me what, are, what is the surface area of the resultant solid. If I show the combination of the solid like this, children, they are seeing, they are using all this. And sometimes they can view the solid to them. They can touch and they can sense and they can tell that, yes, I'm, I'm able to see your five faces of the cube. And then in the top face, I'm not able to see the complete square over there because I place the hemisphere on that circular part is hidden over there. Then I'm able to see the curved surface area of the hemisphere. So if I show the solid children, they are using all the sense they are touching and they are bringing the formulation, how to uh, formulate the surface area of the particular solid. Right? So when we, that is, if they ask some questions, if they participate in the discussion, 70% of what we say, they are able to do it. Suppose last one, the last one is the 90% of what we say and do, they are able to get it after some weeks or it may retain ever. So doing a dramatic presentation or simulating the real experience, doing the real thing, if they create some model and they talk about it, they never ever forget about it. Suppose uh, in the clinometer experiment itself, if they just find by taking the clinometer, they see the uh, top or uh, top of the tree or top of the pole, and if they are able to measure the height of the pole, they are doing it real thing. So this thing they never ever forget. That is called experience. So we are giving the experience to them. They are handling the clinometer. They are able to find the height of the person or height of the pole or height of the tree, anything, if they do it like that, surely 90% of what we say, they never ever forget. The last two things is the active learning. So when they will get the 100% learning, what do you think? 
So reading, hearing, seeing, just watching, only 50% by Participating in that and doing, if they are doing the real thing, the 90 percentage. What do you think when they will get the at least 100%, not 99.9%? When do you think? What do you think? What might be we can add? Any idea? After getting evaluated, might be after getting the results, after doing something like that. Result is something different, right? Now we are in the process of the learning only. We are in the process of learning. We didn't write the examination, no assessment at all. Okay. The art integration method, ma'am. So through the participation of students, make involvement students in dance. Yeah, completely. Yeah, participation, involvement. Yes, if they work with a complete pleasure, right? Complete eating itself. If we have the complete pleasure in that, okay, then surely everything will go inside. Okay, the pleasure affinity should be there. If the affinity and pleasure is there, surely. There will be 100 percent. You can't say ninety nine point nine percent learning. <laughs> okay, so yeah. for everything, what is required is an affinity, and I should learn. The determination should be there. The pleasure should be there. If they have the pleasure, whatever the toughest concept, whatever the toughest thing, even we can also achieve it. Right? Okay. So this is the cone of learning, and if the child should achieve the things, ninety nine percent learning should be there means they can get it through the experience only so how to go about the experiential learning okay how we have to view the experience that we are going to see now right shall i move the next slide so the next slide experiential learning in the classroom nothing but learn by doing so experiential learning is the process of making meaning from direct experience if the children have the direct experience then they'll understand more. So experiential learning is a more effective way to gaining understanding of materials than the ordinary lecture-based discussion. If we, whatever we say, this is so important, this will come for the examination. Whatever we tell that, okay, whatever we just do the drilling, but we can't attain, the student can't attain the complete 99% or 100 percentage learning. If they undergo the things using the experience only, effectively they can understand the concepts. So this is not told by me. This is the general idea. And uh, these things, the education is the famous education is told by doing the research. By doing the research. So we retain 75% of what we do compared to 5% of what we hear. So whatever we tell to the students thousand times, or two thousand times, or ten thousand times, only they can get something. So where the complete retain, uh, the seventy percent of retain where they will get means when they do. Okay, so when they actually doing the things only, they are able to get it. So the famous Aristotle, Greek philosopher, what the person told: for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. So children should learn the things by doing them. In mathematics, wherever possible, we have to give that opportunity so that 100% learning would be accurate there. See, uh, I can give some simple example there, right? Experiential learning means um, why the children having the difficulty in uh, doing the fractions or working with the decimals, right? Children are never like decimals. If they have the old number, they comfortably work. Will you agree? If they have the whole number, they comfortably go. If we do the same problem with the decimals or the fractions, then they find it very difficult. What do you think? Why is it so? Why is it so, you think? Why they are not so comfortable in the fractions? If the whole numbers, they are very much comfortable. But if the same thing, if we talk with the negatives, negative integers or the fractions or the uh, decimal forms, they are not that comfortable, isn't it? Right? Solving the equation, you take it, teachers. If we just give the 2x plus 3 equal to uh, 5x plus 4, they may do it. Suppose 0.5x minus 2.5 equal to 17 by 3. If they see like that, then that's it. No, this is not my question. This is not for me. Like that, you will take. 
right? Why? Why is it so? You are thinking to Why convert. Is... They feel. Uh, they feel. Yeah. They have some struggle to convert decimal into fraction. Mom, first. Because they are not visualized. They are not. They are not having experience over that. Oh, in a regular life, I'm giving one chocolate. and whole things only they were uh, discussing and they were seeing in each and every day they doesn't compare that 0.5 3 by 7 in their day to day life it might be a problem for them i think so. they have not visualized it right ah, so never exactly. when i was at a small age my mom used to tell me write the provision list so i will write the provision two dal 1 and 1/2 kg 1 1 by 2 kg 1 by 4 kg at the age of 4 and 5 and i used to go to the shop and buy it When I buy it, I see the weighing machine whether he is putting the proper weight over there. And Mama used to tell, see, in the weight balance, that that uh, the bar should be exactly vertical. You have to see that needle. The needle should be vertical. Then only exactly balance over there. But nowadays children they won't get the experiment, right? They are just going to supermarket. They are grabbing it. Everything in the packet, right? One kg go there and get it. Two kgs they have to put it there. So, but when I was, but when we were. When we were in the younger age, we'll be having the anarchy kadek, right? We we'll go on get the things. You remember? Yeah, yeah. We we'll go there and anarchy will be having the weighing machine. And suppose two fifty grams, we put hundred, hundred, one fifty, and one left pan. Another pan you use to put the materials. Okay, so there we are learning. We got experience, right? And we know what is the two fifty grams. Two fifty grams is equal to the One uh, by fourth of the kg. That we know very well, because by experience we have learned it. But nowadays children they don't have that kind of learning because they have not seen the uh, they have not seen the uh, weight pan itself, weighing pan itself, isn't it? And even dealing with the rupees and paise, if we give any problem based on the paise, twenty five paise and fifty paise linear equation problem, that's it. They don't know to do the conversions and all. Why they have not experienced? Okay. Where they are taking the money and going, everything is the online, right? Digitalized. Just go. You have to cash it. That's it. Money will be taken. So they don't have the experience of seeing the rupees and paise. That's what in primary classes and all they are just showing the notes. Otherwise, they do the role play. Okay. So shopkeeper is there. They are coming and getting the things, and they have to do the list and they have to find what is the final amount. Okay, because. They are still not get, not getting the experience in the practical. Only in the classroom situation, we have to bring those practices. They Only even don't know calculating, ma'am. For example, if they are going for a shopping and buying all the things what they were, are going to eat, like uh, the total amount is one seventy rupees. They are not even not calculating. We used to calculate. I bought this for ten rupees, twenty, fifty. We used to calculate. We used to check that once. They are not no one seventy. I take this one seventy like that. They are not even calculating it nowadays. It's very yes. Everything yeah. is digitalized, so they are not getting the experience. At least in the classroom, we have to bring those things, right? Yes. Shall we proceed to the next thing? Yeah, ma'am. Yes. So, national education policy tells that in all stages, experiential learning will be adopted, including hands-on learning, arts integrated, and sports integrated education, storytelling-based pedagogy. and among others as standard pedagogy within each subject and with explorations of relations among different subjects yesterday we were discussing about the constructions and the graphs so constructions why children uh, they are feeling as very simple and why are we telling it is the easily scoring mark scoring right constructions are mark scoring even the graphs bar graph histogram and all mark scoring why is it so they are doing on their own they are practicing that They are having the bone. They are taking the compasses. They are drawing the circle, right? They are measuring the angle. They are constructing the perpendicular bisectors. They are understanding. Okay, this line is perpendicular to the line segment. Since they are experiencing it, they are telling the constructions are very simple. Graphs are very simple. So that experience we have to view not only in the constructions, not only in the graphical part. In each and everything, we can view the. Idea about the experience. Okay, for example, if we take HCF and LCM, so how are we going to give the some information, some experiential learning to the students? 
So we see that so HCF and LCM. Okay. So how we can bring the experiential learning through the HCF and LCM concept. Okay. So all know how to do HCF, how to do LCM, but when they come in the application problems, really they don't know where to apply HCF, where to apply LCM. So let us do some examples. Suppose if they are the lower class, because in class six itself, we have the HCF LCM concepts, isn't it? In class six, we have playing with number concept in that one of the important uh, exercise, uh, application problems based on the HCF and LCM, right teachers? So when we are teaching, for example, let us take this example, 12 and 16. So children all like the chocolates, okay? So whenever you do give examples, you give with whatever they like. So personalized education, whatever they like. Suppose if they are the boys, they can you can talk about the uh, video games. They like the video games. So like that, we can uh, give the examples here. Suppose the girl scenario or the small students, 600 children means we can give the example with the chocolates. See children, I have 12 dairy milk chocolates and 16 milky bar you all like dairy milk and milky bar no means they all just enjoy so we are engaging the students here yes so i have 12 chocolates 12 dairy milk chocolates and 16 milky bar chocolates now what you have to do you have to put it in the packets okay so i want i want to use only the minimum number of packets okay so how will you put it? And again, remember in each packet, equal number of chocolate should be there. Okay, and you should not mix up the chocolate. For example, if you take three dairy milk, three, 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 everywhere, three dairy milk, everywhere, three milky bar. Like that, we have to put. So tell me, minimum number of packets only you have to use. So what is the minimum number of the packets you use to pack 12 dairy milk chocolate? and 16 milky bar chocolates. I'm talking about 600 children, okay? In sixth grade, how to go about this? In 10th grade, we have to go in a different manner. So what the child do? Uh, suppose if I put one month chocolate in a packet, so one chocolate in a pack, if I do like that, then I need 12 packets of, 12 packets to put dairy milk and 16 packets to put the milky bar. So totally, I need the 28 packets. It is not cost effective, so it's not required this. Then two chocolates in a packet. Two chocolates in a packet means I need six packets to put the dairy milk chocolates. And here I need eight chocolates to put the milky bar chocolates. So six plus eight, here I want the 14 packets. Like that, children will take the factors of the 12 and 16. Now, three, so three, we can't do it because uh, three is not the factor of 16. So we can't go by three, okay? Because I want the equal number of chocolates in all the packets. Then talk about the four, next four. Yes, if I take the four chocolates, then I'll be getting the three packets of dairy milk and the four packets of milky bar. So three plus four, I'm getting the seven packets. So minimum number of the packets required is seven because after this they can't proceed. If they go by five, five is not the factor of 12 and 16. And if they go by six, six is not the factor of 16. Then if they go by eight, eight is not the factor of 16. <coughs> so those numbers they can't apply. So the uh, highest common factor here is the four. So four is the maximum number, divides both 12 and 16. Therefore, the answer here is, the question here is the minimum number of packets. Okay. Yes. So just by seeing the word minimum, they can't do LCM. That's what yesterday ma'am told. Don't go by the word. Minimum means LCM. Maximum means HCF. It is not. It's absolutely wrong. So it depends. Yes. So the question here is the minimum packets. So if they want the minimum packet, then they have to put the maximum number of chocolates in the packet. Okay. If the question is about what is the maximum number of the chocolates in the packet, means it's HCF. Directly they'll say, so HCF of 12 and 16, 4. But the question here is, what is the minimum number of the packets required to put the dairy milk and milky bar in exact number of times? That means they have to take the HCF 
and they should divide and tell the number of packets. So seven packets is the answer. So we can't go by the minimum or maximum. So like this, you can take the uh, chocolate example, you can do it, or you can take some marbles, two different color marbles so that they learn it, they experience it. Okay, they can itself divide and show to you. Okay, 12, some red color marbles, 16 green color marbles. Like this, they can view the marbles and they can ask them to group it. So when they're grouping, they can understand, oh, so in each group I have four chocolates. So I can make three groups of red color marbles. I can make four groups of black color marbles. So totally I have seven groups. Like that, they can easily understand. And these examples only for the lower grade students. Okay. We can't apply the same thing for the higher level in the class 10. So class 10, how to go about the HCF and LCM. Even for the small, the lower class students, we can ask them to measure the rectangle. So we can draw the rectangle. So the length of the rectangle is two meter. Breadth of the rectangle is one meter. I have the different sticks to measure this. You have to measure using the exact number of times. I have 10 centimeter stick. Then I have 20 centimeter stick. I have 25 centimeter stick, 50 centimeter stick. Then I have one meter stick. So what is the maximum measurement, maximum, maximum stick, maximum length of the stick you will be taking to measure the length and breadth in exact number of times. So this you could you do in the lower class, uh, two meter, you can draw the rectangle or if you have the board with two meter length and the one meter, you can do it. Or you can draw the rectangle with the length of two meter and breadth to one meter and you take the different sticks to measure that. Okay, 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter, 20, 5, 50, 1 meter and ask the students to measure. And you ask what is the greatest uh, measurement tape you will be taking to measure the length and breadth of the board with the exact number of times means if they take the 10 centimeter, they have to measure for the more number of times. If they take 20, again, there also, they have to measure more number of the times. So 10, 20, 25, 50, 1 meter, everything are the factors of both 1 meter and 2 meter. In that, if they measure with the 1 meter scale, they can measure the length with two times. Okay, two exact times with one meter scale, we'll be getting the two meters and measuring the breadth with only one time. So in three exact times, easily the children can measure the length of the rectangle and breadth of the rectangle. Like that, we can give the experience risk. We can give the hands-on experience to understand the HCF concepts, right? Any other thing you would like to add on in this before I go to the class 10? Shall we do this small, small uh, experiments in the class for the HCF? What do you think, teachers? Yeah, ma'am, we can do that, ma'am. Okay. Suppose in the higher class students, okay, if, for the 10th class students, we can't do this. Then they easily see this until. So for the 10th class students, how we have to explain is we have to explain using the Euclid division lemma. Okay. So Euclid division tells that dividend equals divisor into quotient plus reminder. So we can uh, use some notebook. Suppose uh, we have 35 max notebooks and 45 science notebooks. They have to put the set. And you should tell that in all the sets, equal number of notebooks should be there. Okay, that is the condition. And you tell me what is the minimum number of the sets you can make it. Minimum number of sets. Again, the word here, minimum number of the sets. But if I want the minimum number of the sets, I have to put the maximum number of notebooks in each set. Isn't it? Okay. If I put the maximum number of the notebooks in each set, then I will get totally minimum number of the sets. That's what we shouldn't use the word minimum and maximum here. So you take the notebooks itself. So I have 35 notebooks, one file, max notebooks, and the 45 number of the science notebooks. Now tell me, children, I have to put the sets. And in each set, equal number of notebooks it should be there. In all the sets, equal number of max notebooks and equal number of science notebooks. That is the given condition. So how many minimum number of the sets you will be put using the max and the science? That's the question. And you should not mingle it. Max means 
if you take the set of the max only max notebook should be there if you take the set of the science only science notebook should be there that is the condition you should not mix it up then tell me what about the minimum number of the sets required that means here the children should use the euclid division lemma so what the child should do means 35 and 45 so small number is 35 and 45 is the biggest number so children should divide so when dividing 35 once 35 10 10 is the reminder so now 10 is a reminder 35 will become the new dividend so they have to group so first 35 as it is and the 45 should be taken as 35 plus 10 is the reminder now we can group by using the 10 tens by using tens only we can group it whatever we are getting the reminder with the reminder only we can group it further okay so 35 max as it is one group and science it has become 35 plus 10 okay so now we can do the grouping using the tens group of tens only we can do it so now 35 what we can do 10 threes are 30 again 5 is a reminder so we can group here 10 10 notebooks 10 10 10 and we'll be having the 5 similarly here 10 10 then 5 will be there. Okay. So now what happened? We got the 5 as a reminder. Now we can group these groups of 10 with only 5. five. Whatever we have the reminder, we can group only with that only. So now we have the 5. So now we have to divide the group using the sets of 5. So sets of 5 when I do, what I'll get? So 5 is a reminder. Now 10 become the new dividend. So 5 twos are 10, 0. Till I get the 0 as the reminder, I have to proceed this division. So now what the child can do? We can, child can split this 10 notebooks as 5, 5. Similarly, 5, 5 here. Here, 5, 5. Here, 5. So exactly it is divided. Now how many sets are there in this? Max notebooks, how many sets are there? Could you give the answer? How many sets are there? Seven. So seven sets of mathematics book. In each set, five notebooks are there. Now, the next one here also, if they split it. So five, five. The next one again with five, five. Again, the next one with five, five. And then the last one, five. Here we have 10. So if they split like this, then the totally, how many sets are there in this? Totally, nine sets are there, right? So 45 notebooks, they can make the nine sets. In each set, five notebooks are there. So minimum number of the sets, what they can make means seven sets of max notebook and nine sets of the science notebook. In each set, five notebooks are there. Therefore, the HCL of 35 and 45 is five. So how they are getting by applying the Euclid division theorem, that is the continued division they have done, till they are getting the zero, they have to divide the numbers. So what is the final division here means five. So five is the highest common factor. So in each set, five notebooks must be there. Like that, we can view the notebooks as and to get the answer like this. So they have to make the sets. So what would be the maximum number of the set in each set? That is the question means they have to find the HCF. So don't tell the students minimum and the maximum. That's surely misleading. So here itself, we have seen the question minimum number of the sets. But children, they have to find the maximum number of notebooks in each set gives the minimum number of the sets totally. Isn't it teachers? So like that, if we do one small experiment in the class, then children surely they will be understanding. Just they have to put the sets using the number of notebooks. So children surely they will be understanding. If they understand, they won't be having any difficulty in finding the HCF and LCM. So this is the concept for the HCF. LCM, how to proceed it? Shall I proceed for the LCM? Are you all here, teachers? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So LCM, for example, if you take uh, Sonali and two students, I'm taking Sonali and Ramya. So Sonali, she is taking the 18 minutes time to complete one round, one round of the park. 
okay to just move around one round the path she is taking 18 minutes of time and ramya she is taking 12 minutes of time to complete one round the question here is after how many minutes will they meet again at the starting point so how you have to proceed this so ma'am told that small example if we if we want to find something the value more than the given numbers we have to go for the lcm less than the given numbers we have to go for the hcf that is the um, children they can apply this for the analyzing whether they have got the correct answer or not for the analyzation they can go for this but the experimentation we have to give some simple scenario like this so we can tell that sonali and the ramya in the first round so sonali covered first round in 18 minutes time and ramya covered first round in 12 minutes of time and two rounds what the time taken by sonali to complete the two rounds two rounds 36 36 minutes and ramya she has taken 24 minutes to cover the two rounds what about for the three rounds sonali takes 54 48 minutes right 48 oh, i'm sorry uh -huh. I make I make a mistake here. Eighteen three. Fifty four. And Ramya takes thirty six. Okay. And to complete the four rounds, Sonali takes seventy two. Seventy two. And Ramya takes forty eight. Forty eight. So now, so where they are meeting? After how many minutes will they meet again? At the starting point is after 36 minutes, they both meet in the starting point. But Sonali would have been completed only two rounds, right? Whereas Ramya completed three rounds here. So like that, we can use some simple scenario and we have to make them to understand this HCF LCM. So HCF LCM, please give some scenarios like this. They have to experience what is HCF and LCM so that without any mistake, they can do the concepts. So now we'll move to the next slide. It is about the learning. So learning should go through all the four stages. So what are the four stages here is the concrete experience. So children should have some experience. If you are doing some clinometer experience, children, okay, they are feeling, okay, now is seeing the top of the pole. So they're experiencing there. And reflect to observation. So after observing that, after watching that, children will be having some observation. So reflect to observation. So how to go about this? Some questions will be raised in that mind, in the mind of the student. That is called the reflective observation. Then the next stage is the abstract conceptualization. After having the few questions doubt, they may clear the doubts with their peers or with the teachers, and they will bring some concept over there. Okay, so here ma'am is C. So it forms the right angle triangle there. That tri right angle triangle only ma'am drawn on the board. So the real right angle triangle and the triangle drawn on the board both are similar. So using the proportionality, ma'am is able to find the height of the board. So like that, they will bring some conceptualization there. And the last fourth stage is the active experimentation. So children, they like to do this activity. So they will take the clinometer and they will find the activity. So that is the active experimentation. So children should go through all four things. Then only the real learning will take place. So the first thing is the experiencing. They have to experience it. Yes, now, now we have seen the HCF and the LCM problem, right? One second. HCF and the LCM. So first they have to experience, oh, like this only we have to arrange the notebooks, right? So they will get some experience. Then they will imagine, oh, so if we arrange like this, we are getting this. So the question here is the how many sets to be taken? So minimum number of sets means then there will be maximum number of the notebooks. Then only we can put the minimum number of the sets over there. So they are reflect and they are asking questions, okay? Then they analyze and they think, oh, this is the highest common factor. So if you divide and bring it, you will get the highest common factor. Then they decide, yes, this is the concept. So I have to apply the Euclid division and I have to get the answer. They are acting on that. They are converging the point. Now they came to the conclusion, okay, to do these things, I have to approach the HCF. To find the 
minimum number of the distance covered so i have to go for the lcm so like this they are coming to the conclusion so when they come to the conclusion they work more number of the questions so that they can go for the higher order level thinking right so now we'll see in detail the stage when all the learners should go through these four stages to get the experiential learning stage 1 is the concrete experience the learner cannot learn merely by just reading or observing 100% it is not possible he needs to actively participate in the experience by feeling it with all the five senses if it is a surface area at home please give the solids to them so let them touch and you you ask them so here i have the combination of the cone and the cylinder so i want to find the surface area of this if i want to find surface area where at all you did painting so children will be telling so i i'll be painting the third surface area of the cylinder then i can paint the base area then i can paint the curved surface area of the cone therefore total surface area of the given solid is csc of the cylinder plus base area of the cylinder plus the csc of the cone like that we have to give the experience by seeing the solid by touching the solid children will understand the exact formulation stage 2 is reflective observation when we view the object like this children they'll come to the conclusion they ask the questions by themselves this is the second stage where the learner reflects on the situation before forming any opinion before they are framing the equation before they are framing the formulation children they will understand it okay we are fixing the cylinder on the cylinder we mounted the cone so here the base radius of the cylinder and the radius of the cone both are same so that the that is the top part the top part of the cylinder and the base area of the cone both exactly coincide so that we are not able to see the face like that they will be asking the question they will come to some conclusion they may ask the question with the peer group or they can ask the question to the teachers also stage 3 is the abstract conceptualization so once they experience once they ask questions like that they will come to some conceptualization okay the learner creates the theories to explain his experiences in this stage the learner gathers and analyzes the information and draws the conclusions sometimes it may challenge the pre existing concept what are the concept they have learned they they compare it and sometimes they may have some challenge also so this focuses on learning by thinking now the thinking they are actually thinking how to work out the problem and stage 4 is the active experimentation so active experimentation is children they can do the new models and they can create the surface area and the volume or they can apply these concepts in the abstract level of the questions so this is the final stage where the learner applies what he has learned by learning by doing so this things that the experiential learning should be brought in our regular what is it regular lecture method of the teaching so the learner can enter the learning cycle at any stage but he or she must go through all four stages to complete the learning cycle that is the actual learning right so experiential learning what are different ways different strategies to bring it means they can do by the role play field trip films and documentaries video projects guest speakers or portfolios art based activities peer tutoring many things are there so now i am going to concentrate this art based activities and portfolios because these two are the main components in our internal assessments is it so teachers so we have to understand why to do the art based activities and why to do the portfolios so now we will see that so why art why they have taken the art so art is the creative expression of an individual so this expression can be verbal art means it's not only drawing or painting or doing embroidery it can be the written it can be the enactment or it can be the visual or any other forms that has the potential or the ability to communicate so children should communicate whatever they are thinking for that art is a medium so art is the thing easily they can express it so art is the power of expressing the innermost thoughts of an individual even you can see this training program if i just show everything using the black and white will it be attracting to you if i just show my okay. ppt i am putting everything in the words in a uh, in a word i am just displaying it okay so it won't be give that much of the attraction 
if I show that uh, some figures over there, I show the cone of learning, something colorful, you will try to see, okay, what ma'am has given there, right? <laughs> that is called the engagement. That is the, or the power of the art, okay? It is a cross-curricular approach to teaching and learning based on collaboration between the teaching of subject with the teaching of the art. So where art in any of its multiple forms becomes a primary pathway to learn the subject or topic and also of the assessment. So it gives the collaboration between their art and the subject. So both we have to integrate and they have to do the project also. When art is integrated with education, it helps a child apply art-based inquiry, investigation, exploration, critical thinking and creativity for the deeper understanding of the concepts or the topics. So we have seen last before this last session, I have shown that one child written the poem about the linear equation. That is the interest. She is very good in the poem writing. And the max, she she now she got the interest in the mathematics. So she just integrated her poem writing skill and the mathematics, and she written the beautiful poem. So, like the children should integrate the concepts and the field, whatever they are good in it. So next, art integrated learning is a strong contender for experiential learning. So if you want to bring the experiential learning, we have to bring the art integration learning also. It enables the student to derive meaning and understanding directly from the learning experience. This kind of integration not only makes the teaching and learning process joyful. So when you bring something art, when it shows something, when it shows some models, children will be enjoying it. It is not that always chalk and talk, right? Something if you do always monotonous, then children, they won't be having the interest. That's what sometimes children, uh, I should not say this, they are having some aversion in mathematics, right? Every time we are going and doing something on the board and they are popping in the notes, they are asking the question. So we should change our scenario also so that it will be enjoy, enjoyment to the students, okay? It is a process of the joyful thing. It will bring this kind of the integration. It also has a positive impact on the development of certain life skills. Why do we have to bring the art means it gives some impact on the life skill. So life skill means communication skill. So if you show the art and teach, children are able to communicate them, communicate, communicate something about it. So reflection and inquiry skills, inquiry skills, unconditioning of the mind leading to the higher confidence levels. And when they have the higher confidence levels, automatically they'll get the self-esteem. So, and they are able to appreciate for the aesthetic and the creativity. So, it broadens the mind of the student and enables them to see the multidisciplinary links between the subject, topic, and the real life. Okay, so just we have seen why the art we have given the more important. Yes, teachers. So, now what are different art forms are there? Means visual arts. So, they can do some two dimensional, uh, two dimensional picture drawing and painting, collage making, they can do it, printing, photography, and children are very good in the computer graphics. So in these two years, I've seen in the online teaching, my art creation project completely using the PPT. So they have made the wonderful PPTs. They are very, very good in the computers. Then three dimensions, they can create the model using the different combination of the solids, right? And construction, carving and sculpture, this is some part, and even the music, movement and dance, everything they can bring the art. So we'll see one by one quickly. I'll show some examples also. So art integration, education, only it, it won't do just the uh, joyful classroom, but also we are imbibing the, please go through this. Why the art integration came in? It is to imbibe the Indian ethos through the integration of the Indian arts and culture in the teaching and learning process at every level. So to bring that culture implicating in our um, art integration. So we need this projects. The teacher must facilitate exploration of the research on the topics to give students hands-on experience. So what, how they do the process means, first, they have to select a topic or the theme using their prior knowledge, previous knowledge, children should choose a topic. Then providing creative inquiry. So how they can take the project, for example, in Jammu and Kashmir is given to us, right? The Tamil Nadu students, they have given the Jammu and Kashmir. So from the Jammu and Kashmir, what they can take? They can take the Dal Lake to work about the volumes, or they can talk about the monuments. So Vaishnava Devi Temple is there. So wonderful monument, 
and wonderful uh, what is sculpture is there so how to find the surface area and volume so like that they can give the n number of the ideas to the students and assessment assessment how we should do how they involve the subject and the art so in that way we have to assess it so reflection on the new learning so once they have understood they have created the new projects so we achieve the learning outcome the top thing that is the creativity so whatever they have learned in the teaching teaching learning process that they made into a simple project so they are reflecting on the new learning of the subject using an art form that is the purpose of the art integration project okay so now it is a colorful part the other half an hour we are going to see what the projects they have done so how we can give the ideas right so ready to we'll start yes this project here is the uh, stained glass window so we are teaching the linear equations right so ask the students to draw the uh, take the graph in the graph they can take many lines right the lines they have to draw it by plotting the points they have to draw the lines and wherever they getting the combined figure they can do some different colors over there and we can beautifully bring the stained glass window activity children will enjoy and do this activity and if you see the next to one the minion uh, minion cartoon figure is there so we can do some points over there they connect the points and bring the beautiful design even we can do the mirror reflecting activity also in the first quadrant children they can draw any beautiful geometrical figure and they can see what is the reflection with respect to y axis with respect to x axis like that also we can do small activities children will enjoy and do it they can draw any figure on the first quadrant and what is the reflection with respect to y axis x axis they can bring a beautiful figures and this they enjoyed and did the minion figure or we can do some uh, coordinates to them they have to plot those coordinates and they can bring the beautiful figure and these beautiful students this work when you work with the coordinate geometry children they love and do it they can bring a wonderful activities based on this they are learning how to plot the points 3, 4 where to plot minus 4, 0 where to plot like that they can understand where to plot and bring this the next one based on arithmetic progression so i ask them to do it bring some beautiful geometrical figures based on the arithmetic so where the arithmetic progression you are seeing so bring some project means i have got one such project okay so she used the triangle pentagon seven side nine side like that they have she has brought a um, geometrical figure and it form the sides forms the iap So three, five sides, seven sides, nine side, eleven side, etc. So it is forming the AP like that. She brought some beautiful figure. Okay, and then you could see here. She told that last term of the polygon, the last term of the polygon in the progression would be a circle. So she just connected her class eight visualizing solid shape. So when we increase the more number of the sides, at most it will take the single point, right? At last, yeah. it goes to the single yeah. point. Ah, uh, it goes the single point. It almost looks like a circle. She connected the visualizing solid shape that part, and she brought here. So like that, children they have made the n number of the projects, and you can see here the next one, spiral spiral. Spiral spiral. So she has not just drawn a spiral, and she made the beautiful figure based on this. Okay, so if you do one simple example like this, children they will see, and they create many more. Uh, projects small small activities based on that so the next one what is this using the quadrant circle quadrants right using the quadrant making some different figures like this so here if you see the first one in semi circle two quadrants and another quadrant so made like a tortoise figure so what is the area of this figure and here the next you can see only the one quadrant is reversed at this place right And one beautiful figure is there. And you see the last one. Can you tell me how many quadrants used in this? This butterfly. Three quadrants. Three quadrants. Three. Okay. We can ask the children to find the area or circumference. Even we can give this as the case-based question. They'll enjoy and do it. So give some quadrants. Ask them to do. Bring the beautiful figures based on it, and ask them to find the. Area of the figure, whatever they form, area and the perimeter of the figure, whatever they form. Like that, we can give the 
art integration projects. Okay, shall we move to the next one? Yes, right. yes, now look at this. Just they have taken the plates and they have shown the various properties of the circles. Right? So and a degree measure theorem they have shown here. And what are the parts of the circle? And cyclic quadrilateral and angle in semicircle is 90 degree. Sector, minor sector, major sector, what is a chord? Segment, angle in the same segments are equal. Right? So like this, we can they can do it and they can exhibit everything on the display, display board. So children, by seeing it itself, they can learn the concepts. And here you can see the tangent, right? So if the point is external, they can draw the two tangents and tangent is perpendicular to the radius. Like this, they can bring the interesting things just using the circular plate in the straws, they have drawn it. And here, showing that length of the tangents are equal from the external point of the circle. So like this, we can do a simple, simple activity. Children would enjoy this in class nine and 10. So if they do like this from here itself, they can learn all the concepts of the circle, the circle theorems. So instead of telling every time recalling the statement, we can show this and we can tell the statement children will be able to understand, right? So next we have wheel of Theodorus. Again, the same, the square root spiral. Isn't it, teachers? Do you like these projects? Yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can uh, utilize those things. Next one. Again, the AP project. So AP is there, the column also, right? The simple rangoli, whatever we are making. There also we have the AP. Okay, whatever we are seeing day to day life, there we have the AP. Here she, she has made this column. In this column, circle radius, it forms a AP. 2 centimeter, 3.55, 6.58. So this forms an AP. And also triangles in each circular part. That also forming the AP. Like that, she made the beautiful design. And here she made some pyramid design, steps design. So there also it forms the AP. And if you see here, this left side, and she made the uh, different polygons. She started with triangle, square, uh, pentagon, hexagon, nonagon, octagon. Okay. But using that, she made a beautiful figure, the joker like figure. Okay. Like that also, children they can enhance the creativity. Okay, shall we move to the next one? Shall I? Yeah, ma'am. Yes, now ma here you can see, not only drawing, some children, they are not good at drawing and all. What they will do is, whatever they are seeing, the monuments or the different building, from that they will find the AP. So here she has taken the Gutenberg Sweden building. So in the building, what she's telling, um, the building expands by 1,500 millimeter in each floor. So each floor expands 1,500 meter. So the floors, it forms a AP. First X, then X plus 1,500. Then the third floor is X plus 3,000 projected. The fourth one is X plus 4,500 millimeter projected. So it forms a AP. So she is able to visualize the AP in this building. Like that also children can do it. Okay, shall I move to the next project? So before we move to the portfolio, I would like to show. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. One minute. Let me take those two projects. Yeah. Look at this PPT. Uh, no, small play. Is there. <laughs> Look at the question she framed using the Shanti Stupa. So there's a shrine. Using the shrine, she made the question. A 1.5 meter tall boy is standing at some distance from a 30 meter tall monument. Uh, the angle of elevation from his eyes to the top of the monument increases from 30 degree to 60 degree as he walks towards the monument. Find the distance he walks towards the Shanti Stupa. That's the question she framed and you see how she worked. So she brought the uh, 
figure for that. taken each triangle and she worked the interpretation. So she found the distance as 33 meter. So they have talked up they have here they have spoken about the fractals. So fractals in different figures, and the next one is the paper mesh. In Kashmir, paper mesh is very very uh, popular. So this is the uh, cylinder made out of the paper mesh, and particular girl she found the total surface area of the paper mesh. Found the volume of the box, surface area of the box, and then one statistics report about the black naked grain. So, exhibiting that in the line graphs, and the other one is using the pie chart. And the language composition of the Jammu and Kashmir showed in terms of the bar graphs. And literacy rate of J and K shown in terms of the bar graphs, double bar graph, male and the female literacy. So teachers in this project would have been seen how the particular students applied the MA Audible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, how the children apply uh, this using the shrine, they are able to find the distance over there, applying the trigonometry concept, and they apply the statistics and the volume, surface area and volume. The paper mesh is the famous, uh, famous work in the Jammu and Kashmir. So, that they have taken and they found the surface area and the volume of the particular box. So, like that, they can integrate the mathematics with the Jammu and Kashmir arts and um, Arts and monuments and water, it may be from that. Right? Shall I show one more? One more example? Yes, ma'am. Right. And what is the art form they have used here? Art form here is a PPT presentation, right? And they have drawn the graphs, line graphs, those are all the art forms only. But the major thing here is the they represented everything through the PPT. Right, PowerPoint presentation. That is also one of the art forms only. So next we will see. Uh, let me take this PowerPoint. So it was done by the class nine students last year. So here they have spoken about the shawls of Kashmir, music of Kashmir, jewelry of the Kashmir and monuments of Kashmir, how that mathematics applied in these concepts. So shawls of Kashmir, they use the tessellations. 
so they were able to observe tessellation in the shawls and they are mixing the dye in this so beautiful shawl has come so here they use the concept mathematical concept tessellations then the shawls are transported in kashmir so using this van okay so how to find the dimensions dimensions of the truck and uh, how many shawls they can export it using this truck so like a story form they have brought it and the shawls are rolled up and placed one over the other inside the truck and they could find what is the volume of the one shawl for one shawl what is the volume occupied by that then the next they have found it so how many shawls they can place it inside the truck so they found the volume of the truck by volume of one shawl they are able to find the so 13 shawls can be arranged one on top of the uh, one on top of the other inside the truck so like that like a story form they have brought it then the music of the kashmir they analyze the music of the kashmir and the particular girl told it forms the ada samtalam she told one minute so she worked on the talam year and how many beats in each talam so like that she worked and she brought the algebraic expression one second yeah so she has taken the sequence here one minute aadi talam so it forms the aadi talam of the eight beats so it follows a sequence 8 8 4 8 8 it seems to be so using that she worked it so she framed the expression by counting the number of beats so totally how many beats are there in that particular song like that she has uh, brought the idea then the jewelry of the kashmir so using this she found um, so there are eight nine cones in that so what about the radii of the each and every cone she found and what is the amount of paper used in making the necklace so like that she incorporated the surface area and volume and she found the answer over here the answer is 107.8 cm square that is the amount of paper used in making the necklace so in that concept she has brought it then similarly about the three pendants so there also she found the area painted in green and the pink like that she has found it and similarly in the tearing also uh, what about the thread how much thread used to uh, make that particular dome like a uh, tearing so in the perspective she has given this project then the next one about the shankaracharya temple that line design have been made the temple is converted to line design and that string art using the string art they have made one statistical analysis so in the analysis how many quadrilateral how many triangles and circles and other pictures are there so like that they have done the few analysis yes anything you would like to ask or shall i show one more what should i do tell me shall i give one more example yeah ma'am if you are having please show us ma'am yeah so the next one uh see this play hello yes yes it's that hey guys where are you yeah i'm in jammu and kashmir let's see the highlights of this play Jammu and Kashmir was a region formerly administered by India as a state from 1954 to 2019, constituting the southern and the southeastern portion of the larger Kashmir region, which has been the subject of a dispute between India, Pakistan, and China since mid 20th century. Dal was a delicious food. It is the famous food of Kashmir, that is, the Kashmiri Rogan Josh. It was said that 50 grams of Kashmiri Rogan Josh cost rupees 
If the radius of the ball was 10 centimeter and the width of the ball was 3 centimeter, what would be the cost of the dish served to eat? 50 grams of the original dish equals to this part. Radius equals to 10 centimeter, width equals to 10 centimeter, outer radius R1 equals to 10 centimeter, and inner radius R2 equals to 10 minus 3, that is 7 centimeter. One of the head sphere of the ball equals to 2 by 2 by R cube. Total quantity of food equals to 2 by 3 into 22 by 7 into 7 cube. Hence, the final answer will be 780.67 cubic centimeter. 1 cubic centimeter equals to 1 gram. Hence, 780.67 grams. The total amount to be paid will be 718.67 by 50 into 40. That is rupees 574.24. Now, I read a monument called Hadrasvat Shrine, which is located in Jammu and Kashmir. It was built in the 17th century, and now we are going to find the volume of the building. The pillar has some part in the form of a right circular cylinder and the remaining in the form of a hemisphere. The radius of each hemisphere and the cylinder is 8 cm. The cylindrical part is 240 cm high and the hemispherical part is 36 cm high. Find the rate of the pillar, which is 1 cubic centimeter, is of weight 7.8 grams. Let me the at the base of the cylinder and the hemisphere, both are and are centimeters respectively. Are and are is equal to 8 cm, is equal to 2 by 3 by R cube. So, 2 by 3 by 3 is the working part. That is equal to 1 by 3. Can you see it? Why is the or not? The place turns more heavily during winter when the entire place gets covered under a thick blanket of snow. Kashmir's weather in December, January. Now, I have come across a place where kids usually play. The kids have made a huge snowman. Yeah. 
HR class, whatever they have done in the past, that they have explained. So whatever they have done here, so they completely explain. Children are very good in this uh, animation type of the video. So if we really give the projects, they'll explore and they'll come with the very good ideas. So that is my point of view here. So now we'll come to the project. That is our, sorry, my presentation. So this is about the art integration. So I have just taken the three such projects and have shown, and we have only the less time, so I just skipped the few uh, few parts over there. And the next is the very important thing: the portfolio. We have to assess the portfolio, right? So learner here is an active participant, his or her journey through the portfolio building. That is portfolio building. It is comes like process of selecting the documents, organizing, and the very important part is reflection. So they have to write the reflective notes about the documents, whatever they are selecting. So in that, the three parts are there. Portfolio is a purposeful collection of intentionally chosen work by a student, representing a selection of performances that is assembled over time and describes the learner's efforts, progress, growth, and achievement in key areas learning outcomes. So how she has uh, worked throughout the year, whatever the test she has done, assignment she has done, and what she has participated, whatever the competition she has participated, and what certificate she has brought, so that learner progress that she can compile and she can put it in the portfolio, CRE. It is a tool of assessing a variety of skills, not usually testable in a single setting of the traditional written paper and pencil. So. Uh, usually, we test the students by using the traditional written paper pencil test. So now, whatever they have done in the complete year, that they have put in the portfolio form. So we can easily assess and we can see the growth of the learning by seeing the portfolio. Assessments would include assessment this year. It will include self-assessment, peer group assessment, or assessment by teachers and the parents. Like that also, they can bring the uh, record of the assessment. Its use is recommended as a support to the new instructional approaches that emphasize the student's role in constructing the knowledge and understanding that we can see in the portfolio. So let me show one portfolio. Shall I? Are you able to see teachers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Showing yes, ma one portfolio. So this is the portfolio done by one of the students, class 10. So Max portfolio. So first she has given the acknowledgement. Then she has taken the assignment, whatever the assignment we have given. In that sample few problems she has given in the each assignment part. And for in each assignment she has taken one example problem and she has given the reflective notes, very important. So what the, she understood the concept using the uh, assignments given by the teacher. So in that a reflective note she has given here. So I was able to grasp concept more effectively and increase my speed of learning. So I believe I have done all the sums correctly and I was checking. They have significant, significantly enriched my learning progress here. So like this through assignments, what she has achieved that she has given in the reflective note. So next, she made the design by using the PAP. So what the design she has done, how she understood the design, and what way uh, it, it gives the AP here, so that she explained this part, and the reflective note on the AP design. So what are the documents children are uh, keeping in the portfolio? They have to give the reflective note. So what they understood in that in what way they enrich their conceptual and understanding level. So that will be written in the reflective note. So next is the test, different test I have given. So based on the different tests, she has given what way it has helped. So she has given the reflective note of the each and every test, whatever she has taken in the particular year. So these are the documents she has submitted for the particular term two. So this is only for the term two she has submitted. Okay, teachers, I hope you have understood a few things about the portfolio and the art integration project. I think you have been doing this. Just my idea only I have shown here. Let me close this. Come to the PowerPoint. 
and what purposes does a portfolio serve? So it offers the possibility of assessing more complex and important aspects of a learning areas or subject matter that can't be assessed through the traditional form. So what we are not able to assess just in the paper pen test, that we can assess through the portfolio. So it provides a profile of learner's ability in depth, growth, and progress. In, it serves as a concrete vehicle for an ongoing communication or exchange of information, and we can get the feedback among the various stakeholders. So here she has taken the assessment by the students, by other teachers, by their parents. So all the assessments she has taken, she put it in the portfolio. And it serves as a lens and helps to develop among the students and awarenesses of their own learning. So they can see their own learning by seeing the portfolio. So that's what we are asking them to do the portfolio. So they can see the learning progress by seeing the portfolio. So the focus on self-assessment and reflection helps students to identify their strengths and weaknesses. Why we are asking them to write the reflected board page? Because they can identify their strengths and weaknesses, thereby facilitating certain setting up of realistic improvements and goals. So by seeing the strength and weaknesses, they can further improve wherever they have to concentrate. So that's it. We have come, we have come to the last part. So the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates like us, the great teacher inspires. So we should be the great teachers. So we just follow the William Arthur word. Thank you all. And